Let's bring him in right now. Tim Kirkjian and Ken Rosenthal joining us right now, first for a post Hall of Fame results discussion. So, Ken, are you excited that you actually have a teammate here to help you so that AJ can't blame <laughs> everything about the writers on just you? I do <laughs> have excitement that Tim is with us, not only because of that, but also because AJ, in addition to hating writers, hates short people. So, <laughs> with me on that. That's so not and, true. I like Tim. And now we have a two a goal defense. <laughs> I like Tim. I would just maybe it's just you, Ken. I don't know. <laughs> well, Scott, I think you're too young to know. Well, maybe you aren't. The, who the Twin Towers were: Ralph Sampson and Keith Olajuwon, <laughs> and they got into their prime exactly when Junior and I were covering the Orioles at the same time. So Ed Farmer, great scout, dear friend of ours, called us the Twin Towers because we're working together at the same time that Sampson and Olajuwon were starring for the Rockets. So that's the reference for those who don't get it. <laughs> I like it. Yes. No, I do. I'm actually probably older than I look, but I, I do appreciate that because probably half the audience is, is clueless on that front, but it is a great nickname. So Tim, we appreciate having you Ken, of, of course, as always. So Tim, I'll start with you based on a little bit of what we were talking about and just the results in general. What did you think of what you heard and did you have any gripes? Um, well, I voted for eight guys to get in, including the three guys that did. So I understood the voting. I think Billy Wagner will get in next year. And I think the three guys who went in obviously deserve to go in since I voted for them. Uh, Adrian Beltre is a no-brainer. I'm not sure there's a reason not to vote for him. I was a little bit surprised that Joe Maurer made it in on the first ballot. I'm thrilled about that uh, for him. And Todd Helton should have gotten in years ago in my mind. But I'm a more of a big haul kind of guy. But those are three guys that I voted for without hesitation. And I'm glad they all got in. And I'll let you, you have a bone well, no, to pick. With no, my first thing, no, first I want to start with uh, who are the other five you voted for? Well, I voted for Andrew Jones. I voted for... Uh, Wagner, Gary Sheffield, Chase Utley, Carlos Beltran, Andrew Jones. Yeah, those are my eight guys. Um, I'm a little surprised Utley didn't do a little bit better. Uh, I'm happy to see that Andrew Jones is starting to climb a little bit here. And look, I understand people who don't vote for Gary Sheffield, but that, e that OPS is way over nine. Uh, he's one of the most feared hitters of his time, hit 500 home runs. He should be in the Hall of Fame for me. Okay, I got a, I got a couple couple things for you guys. Ken and I got into this a little bit yesterday. Torrey Hunter versus Andrew Jones. If you look at them, if you put their numbers next to each other, they're eerily similar. Why is Andrew Jones getting so much love and Torrey Hunter, you know, almost dropped off the ballot this year? Well, go ahead, Junior. You can take that one. Well, we started this conversation yesterday, and Andrew Jones is obviously debatable because he's not getting in so easily, though he's, he did climb not as much as maybe I thought he would. To me, he is the preeminent center fielder of his generation. And offensively, a little bit better than Torrey Hunter. Defensively, I would say also a little bit better than Torrey Hunter. And I don't use war as an all-knowing measure, but he's significantly above Torrey in war. So they are similar. Torrey Hunter probably deserves a longer look than we're giving him. He's not doing well at all in the voting. But center fielders in general have not done well in recent years. I go to Jim Edmonds. He is a guy that really got short shrift. Bernie Williams, some would argue, deserves more of a look. Kenny Lofton. For whatever reason, we have not done a great job with center fielders. Makes sense. Okay, yeah, then you look at Torrey Maurer. Hunter is going to get a longer look. Anyone who votes for him, I, I applaud them, but I haven't voted for him yet. I look at it every year. I just think that after Willie Mays, uh, Andrew Jones is the greatest defensive center fielder that I've ever seen, and that's what pushes him over for me. Okay, well, I played with Torrey Hunter for a few years. He was the best one I ever saw. So I'm, I'm, he's got my vote, okay? But my, my, then it goes, then my next thing is you look at Joe Maurer. Throw Jorge Posada's numbers up against Joe Maurer and get back to me why Jorge Posada got like 3% of the vote his first year and dropped off the ballot, something like that. It was crazy that Jorge Posada's numbers, and he's got four World Series and all the things that come along with playing in New York, did it his entire career. But Joe Maurer gets in on the first ballot. You guys say batting average doesn't matter, but everyone points to the three batting titles. So which one is it? I'm not saying batting average doesn't matter. You win three batting titles, that's something. And the on-base percentage say that, that goes the, along the new, with it. The new, the new age says oh, batting average doesn't matter. 
Obviously, some new age people like Joe Maurer because there are new age people in the Baseball Writers Association <laughs> of America who are voting, and they voted for him. So Maurer is distinguished by that, by the gold gloves. Jorge Posada was not a great defender, especially as his career went on. And Maurer was the face of that franchise and a guy who, in his 10 years at catcher, did remarkable things offensively. And to me, AJ, I know we disagree on this, but it separates him. He is a guy that belongs in this upper echelon category of major league catchers and fully deserving of what happened yesterday. Yeah, I'm with Junior on this one. Um, what Joe Maurer did was historic. No catcher has ever done what he's done when it comes to batting average. And AJ, sorry, I'm 67 years old. I still value someone who's a lifetime 300 hitter and to win three batting titles when all the other catchers combined won four batting titles. That's pretty darn impressive to me. Played over 900 games behind the plate. And yes, he wasn't the same player when he moved to first base, but those 10 years behind the plate were enough for me to get him in the Hall of Fame. And I'm with Junior on this too. He's a, I love Jorge Posada. He should have been on the ballot much longer. He's going to get a far better look someday. But Joe Maurer was a better defender and I think a better player than Posada, although Posada was really, really good. Okay. One, last one for me on this argument. Jeff Kent, how the fuck's he not in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> I voted for him, AJ. I believe he is a worthy guy. I hope one of the era's committees gives him a longer look. All-time leader, home runs by a second baseman. I know it was in an offensive age, but he was an MVP. He did a lot of big things. And in my view, we talk about all-around players and is this guy not a good defender? Jeff Kent was a good enough defender to stay at second base all those years. So I voted for him. I had a hard time with him not getting in, but... That's your answer without the expletive. Yeah, and <laughs> AJ, I <laughs> voted for him every single year. So we agree on this. And Junior said it right. You had the most home runs for any player ever at that position. He made, with, with some help, he made that into an offensive position. And he was a better defensive player than the numbers suggest. And that you hear, you ask the people who played with him, they will tell you he's better defensively than you think. He's a Hall of Famer for me. He should get in, and maybe he will on, you know, in a, a, another sort of ballot. Okay, I have to ask, why do you keep calling uh, my friend Ken Jr.? Well, <laughs> well, first no, off, he's four feet tall like me, so that's number <laughs> one. And when we were on the beat covering the Orioles, everyone had kind of a stupid nickname. And and Richard Justice, the mischievous beat writer at the Washington Post, <laughs> just gave him the name Junior, and it's stuck ever since. I, I can't call him anything else. I don't even know him by Ken anymore. <laughs> Kenny, his name is Junior and always will be. Now, will always, also, forever. AJ, now and forever, you will be known as Junior on any broadcast with me. <laughs> That's absolutely <laughs> fine. AJ, also, at the time, and you're going to laugh at this, but Cal Ripken Jr. and I had a vague resemblance to each other. Vague. And that was part of it. I don't know if that's why Richard gave me the nickname. Richard gave me the nickname because I was a baby. I was like 23 years old or whatever. But I always wanted to ask Rip Sr., who Tim knows was one of the toughest men that toughest men will ever meet, toughest guy I've ever met. I always wanted to say, you know, Cal, people say I look a little bit like Junior. Is it possible you're my father? That mere notion would have appalled him, but I never had the guts to do it. <laughs> Right. If, if you wanted to hear a swear word, you would have heard that after, hey, I think I look like your son. What do you think? Oh. You're not wait, my wait, son. <laughs> wait, so Junior, which what what do you mean? You look like Cal in the face? Because it's definitely not your body type or your well, what height. What do you think I'm talking about, AJ? I don't know, because it wasn't your athletic You problem. know, you know, you're playing dumb face. Oh, <laughs> we gotta get a split screen of we Timmy, will. we gotta get a split That's screen of Junior and Junior next to each other and see. You know what he's talking about because I, you know, he doesn't have the blue eyes of Cal. You know, he didn't have the batting stance of Cal. I don't know. <laughs> no, I never saw that resemblance. That was a Richard Justice thing, and Richard had some odd ideas, most of which made us laugh. <laughs> hey, I, I want to um, get back to Hall of Fame for one sec because in the chat, there's a lot about personalities, and even though it's not supposed to really affect the voting there, there are many fans that feel like it does actually kent's name comes up on that realm from some fans here gary sheffield for sure comes up albert then, bell 
Albert Bell. But on the other side here, I mean, Joe Maurer is like just universal, nice guy, smiles, the whole deal. So do you feel like either of you, I, Ken, I'll start with you, there's any bias there? And you can tie that into Gary Sheffield, of course, not making it for this last go round, despite trying to be as transparent as he could be, at least according to him, if you're buying his story about the PED connections. Scott, there were 394 voters this year. I can't say with any degree of confidence that all of them excluded the personality element. There were probably some who said, I don't like that guy. He's a jerk. I'm not voting for him. I can tell you that doesn't enter the equation for me one iota, how a player treats me. And I'll give you one example. Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray never talked to me. Eddie Murray once threatened to sue me. And Eddie Murray was a first ballot Hall of Famer. One thing had nothing to do with the other. So... For some writers, I would imagine it becomes a factor, but it really shouldn't. And for the vast majority of us, I don't think it is a factor. Yeah, it shouldn't be a factor. And I'm with Junior on this. Eddie Murray didn't speak to me for like two years. I think he hated my guts. Now, we have since patched things up, which I'm happy to say there's no reason to be angry at somebody after all these years. But, but Scott, you're right about Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer was such a beloved guy, not just in the clubhouse, but by everyone because of what a great guy he was. They told me that every year, AJ just missed playing with Joe Maurer, but they used to have a bowling tournament every spring. The twins did. And they would go to this bowling tournament like behind the KFC in Fort Myers. And Joe Maurer would bring his bowling ball to spring training every year. And he would bowl with all of these fans and he'd like be slapping them high fives when they would make a strike. And they would always play in the player like fan golf tournament. And Joe Maurer is down there with three guys he's never even met in his life. And he's lining up putts with him. And he's he's saying, look, that's three balls to the right. Put it over there. That type of thing. He was so into it. That's one reason everyone loved Joe Maurer is because he's such a good guy. Human nature is what it is. But I repeat, I would never vote against somebody maybe just because he didn't like me. That, that, that doesn't enter at all. That's weird because I played in those golf tournaments, did the same thing. I also was used to bowl with Guardia Gator Lanes. Neither one of you assholes voted for me, so I don't understand. <laughs> I'm a nice guy, too. AJ, that was your reputation, too. Charming man, everybody loved yeah. you. <laughs> but that doesn't supposed to play any point. That's not supposed to play any part in it, you guys just said. So, I mean, you know, I'm I will say a this. little AJ. bit of a double standard here with you guys. I, will I say have a question for you, AJ. Stuff. You were a big catcher. Joe Maurer was even bigger than you. How hard was it for you to be that big behind the plate? And how impressive is it that Joe Maurer was that good at, you know, 6'4", 230 or so? Well, I, I don't know. He played first base half the time, so I don't know. I never played first base. You should let me know how that goes. I would have been a much better hitter if I played first base for, you know, 50% of my game, Tim. <laughs> no, listen, Joe, I love Joe. I, you know, you said I didn't get to play with Joe. I actually played with Joe in spring training. Uh, I, I got, to, I played golf a bunch with Joe and Fort Myers when we were down there. We both lived in the same neighborhood. So listen, I'm, I'm happy for Joe. Um, and, and I can't, you know, to, to me, the thing is, is and we kind of talked about this with, uh, with Ken yesterday. I did a little bit, you know, for me, the, 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 the part that I thought he's a hall of famer, I didn't think he was a first ballot. Cause I think there's some special about being a first ballot hall of famer. Um, his peak years, you know, he really had five years where he caught over a hundred games. The rest were, you know, a lot of DH, a lot of first base, which is fine. His body broke down. Um, so that's why, to me, I was like, yes, Joe's a Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame person, all that. I get it. But the other thing is that I talked about – I'll tell you this, guys, right now, as a catcher, and, and when we played the Twins, Morneau was the guy you feared. You're like, Morneau can go deep off us at any point. Mauer, worst case scenario, is going to hit a single to left, okay? And, and to me, that's like Todd Helton. You're like, oh, gosh, we're playing the Rockies. Helton can hurt us. You're playing the Rangers, whoever Beltre was on. Beltre can go deep. That's the difference for me. Joe had an unbelievable career, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I just thought first ballot to me seems a little much. Do you guys think first ballot should mean something special? No. I do, but I don't know that I distinguish it, AJ, when I vote. And I get what you're saying, and it goes back to the question fans always ask. Well, what's the difference five years from now? Is he a Hall of Famer or not? And if you believe Joe Maurer as a voter is a Hall of Famer now, then you should vote for him. If you think along the lines of, well, not first ballot, I'll vote for him in the future, I generally don't go along with that. 
I did it with Beltron because Beltron, I was uncomfortable with voting for the first year he was eligible after all that happened with the Astros and the sign stealing scandal. I did vote for him this year. So there are instances where I will vote along those lines, but it's really rare. I, that might be the first time. And I don't worry about first ballot or non first ballot. To me, if enough voters, as we saw, voted for Joe Maurer to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, that's it. He's deserving of that honor. Right. And to me, a Hall of Famer is a Hall of Famer. I make no distinction as a first ballot Hall of Famer. And people, friends of mine say, well, Joe DiMaggio didn't get in on the first ballot. Neither did Yogi Berra. He each took three times to get in. That was a mistake. We're not going <laughs> to compound the mistake by saying, well, I can't let you in if Joe DiMaggio didn't get in. To me, you're either a Hall of Famer or you're not. First ballot doesn't really matter to me. Agreed. I agree. But then why why I, I I mean, yeah, we could get argue about. It. I mean, not argue. <laughs> we could discuss this because then why do guys, why do guys who, you know, Andrew Jones, perfect example. He gets started out with like eleven percent. Now he's up to sixty some percent. Whatever. But the there are other exactly. reasons for that, AJ. There were other reasons I, for that. Proud but he's either Hall of Fame or he's not. Did you get nah, one year? If you're, we're only allowed to vote for ten. Okay, so if you're only allowed to vote for ten and you've got ten others, let's say you have twelve in your head that are deserving, then you can't vote for Andrew Jones that year. And that was what was happening several years ago when the ballot was more crowded. Now it's been eased. You shouldn't have that issue. But there are other things that come into play too. Perspectives change over time. We've talked about this. And I understand when fans say, hey, why are you guys changing your minds? But you know what? Would you rather we be closed-minded and just keep the same ballot every year? I don't know that that's constructive. Agreed. Agreed. Right. Okay. And Hey, AJ, there have been years where I wanted to vote for 16 guys. That's how crowded the Hall of Fame ballot was. And we're only allowed to vote for 10. So it's happened to me where I voted for somebody and then I had to take them off the next year because three more guys joined the ballot who were even better than him. This, this is it. I, I've said we should be allowed to vote for as many guys as we want, but the hall and it's their building, it's their museum. They say, no, 10 is the maximum. I get it. Makes it harder, but that's what makes it such a fascinating process. Hey, you two are complaining a lot. Next year, you guys should give up your vote and give it to Scott and I. What do you guys think? <laughs> We're not complaining at all, AJ. We're just trying to answer your wonderful questions. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, speaking of next year, there's some names that come on next year, right? CC and Ichiro are the two, for me, that are pretty clear getting on. But then you got a lot of guys, Pedroia and some other guys that are, you know, MVPs. They got some stuff in their, in their resume. Felix Hernandez is an interesting one to me. Uh, have you guys already looked at next year's ballot? Well, I'm just finishing this one. Each row's in, of course, with 3,000 hits and one of the best defensive right fielders we've ever seen. Uh, CC Sabathia's got a real shot at it, given how durable he was for all those years, Cy Young, everything else. Um, I'm not sure CC's getting in the first ballot, and I don't think Dustin Pedroia's getting in. Again, he was a different player in a lot of ways than Chase Utley, but Chase Utley Pretty darn good player. Got 28% of the vote. So I don't think that bodes well for Dustin Pedroia getting in on the first ballot. I would agree with all of that. And Felix is going to be an interesting one because he had one of these explosive peaks. And you look at his career, he was probably overused by the Mariners. And that's why it ended prematurely. He fell off so quickly. But how do you gauge that as a Hall of Fame voter? And Pedroia is kind of in the Chase Utley, David Wright class, as Tim alluded to, where injuries curtailed his career. Do you hold that against him? How do you look at it? Do you just simply go on what the player did in the course of his career? These are all difficult questions. CeCe is a fascinating case to me because I think of him pretty much off the top of my head, yes, absolute Hall of Famer. You look at the numbers, the numbers aren't quite matching the aura. That's the way my friend Jason Stark put it. And... That doesn't mean he's not a Hall of Famer. I believe he probably will be, and maybe even on the first ballot. But I looked at him compared to Andy Pettit, who is not getting much support and who is someone I don't vote for. It's pretty close. Now, CeCe was more of an ace. I get it. But these are the things that come into your head, AJ, and it makes it difficult when you start saying, well, okay, I'll vote for this one, but this one is very similar. And that also leads to sometimes changing perspectives over time. 